If we are to ready ourselves for invasion, we shall need manpower, provisions, and time, all of which are in notably short supply. Candid as ever, Yugiri, and correct, I concede. Fortunately, I have an idea. Tis plain no single nation can stand against the might of the Empire. And it was only with the aid of others that Dorma succeeded in winning her freedom. So, I mean to take a leaf out of our Eorzean friend's book and form an alliance of our own. In addition to those with whom we already share an understanding, I would reach out to Hingashi and Suinosato, and further afield to the myriad peoples of Nangsha and Dalmasca. I am under no illusion. Not all will answer the call. Yet disparate though we may be, we are united in our desire for freedom. If our neighbors could be made to see what is at stake, Asian machinations and all, Cooperation need not be so far-fetched a notion. It may even seem practical. Under the guidance of our former leader, Master Louis Soir, we once strove to unite the fractious city-states of Eorzea. I dare say that experience shall be of use in your endeavor. We should be glad of your wisdom. For the record, I would have been in favor of this plan even if it hadn't been my grandfather's, but I have to ask, how will we secure the time to carry it out? Not that anyone has forgotten, but the Garleans have airships, lots and lots of airships. Should they catch wind of our plan, they could send an armada to overwhelm us before our alliance had even begun to take shape. Not if we deny them access to the skies. During our time in the burn, the Warrior of Light and I chanced upon some Alagan ruins. Oh? As such ruins go, they were not particularly unusual. But something about the surrounding land struck me as odd. Faint though it was, its ethereal residue was uncannily similar to that of Azizla. Identical, in fact. For locations so far removed to share a single etheric signature is all but impossible. I conclude, therefore, that the Allegans created the floating continent with land taken from the burn. While that is a most intriguing theory, I fail to see what relevance it has to Dorma's defense. As his La was enclosed in a powerful energy barrier, impenetrable even to an agrius class battleship. It occurred to me that those ruins may have enjoyed similar protection. I have no proof, but the Warrior of Light did report seeing a structure resembling other known Allegan field generators. All right, but even if we could put up such an energy barrier, it surely wouldn't extend beyond the limits of the burn. So what's to stop the Garleans flying around it? Fuel. The Dalmascan capital, Rabanasta, was a key imperial refueling point in the east. By laying waste to it as a lesson to the rest, the empire greatly hindered its own operations in the region. If an imperial fleet were to advance upon Dorma, it would now have little choice but to travel, as the crow flies, over the burn. I see. A word of caution. Even assuming the generator still functions, raising a barrier of such a scale will require a prodigious amount of energy. And few places are so bereft of suitable crystals as the burn. Hmm, a source of energy. Tell me, did the Allegans make a habit of launching things into the sky? Curious question. Besides Aziz La, I know of only one other notable instance. The Red Moon Dalamud, whose fall triggered the calamity. 
Just the two occasions, you say? Then I believe I may have a solution to our energy problem. You do? I may. To find out for sure, we would need to visit the Azim Steppe. Which would, I now see, present the perfect opportunity to discuss an alliance with the Zayla tribes. <laughs> How very neat. What say you then? Shall we see whether this road leads?